Martin Chambers, James Honeyman Scott, but not Chrissy Hind, tell Chris Solowitz that Pretenders is a group. Now, Martin, there's the problem of your hands. Yeah, I seem to have a lot of problems. <coughs> Why do you keep hurting your hands? Perhaps we should inform the listeners that not only was the Pretenders American tour called off after Martin Chambers so selfishly cut his hand, but the other week you nearly had to, well, you in fact did have to cancel a British TV date after you again cut your hand. But yeah. Why does this keep happening, Martin? I've no idea, mate. I, I, it's just the way it happens. I was supposed to be opening a window and it, it sort of broke. That's all I'm going to give you apart from my name, rank and serial number. I'm pretty ghastly, actually. It was very bloody. I lost a lot of blood. And that's, I mean, it was obvious I knew immediately the tour had to be uh, sort of temporarily postponed. Well, I was going to sue him. Oh, I knew him like that. That was my, <coughs> my first reaction. I, no, the first reaction was get another drummer in to complete, you know, I mean, we had another five weeks to do. And five weeks with uh, another guy wouldn't have worked out uh, too well. So we thought we'd wait until the lad had healed up. Yeah. And then uh, we knew we could continue the English dates. So, before the first date, in fact, before the sound check, in the afternoon of the first date in Dublin, we're all in my hotel room attending one of my discos. A Vera Lynn disco that day, uh-huh. That was, we had stars on 45 of Vera Lynn. And Martin came down and he was juggling with these Guinness bottles. And, whoop, the other finger went. Well, the, the other hand went. We hand. fell apart actually because it was so funny. Oh, I don't think our manager saw it that way, did he? No, he saw a funny pail of greeny yellow, didn't he? Yeah. More yes. blood. Was there more blood? Than oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it extreme, start. extreme specs. And I, I just like threw my finger over it and bung it under the tap and I went off to the hospital. Well, the blood so just as we were leaving for the sound check, and they sort of like injected it like about a dozen times, like they do with cats, and bung some stitches in, and then I ran back to the sound check and. I mean, no matter what, I was going to carry on. I think it, it, my finger could have been severed completely. I was still carrying on. Tonight, and I'd like to dedicate this one to all the people that are in hospitals tonight. <laughs> You're sometimes accused of being a show-off. Yeah, probably because it's hard to know. <laughs> oh, that's understandable too. But there's only a four-piece band. You yeah. need a, another couple of members in the group sometimes, so I can overplay, but I'm aware of it. Mm. I think we all must be a bit guilty there, actually, in any way. We all do. Over, you know, overplaying over over. a bit. Because, you know, you tend to try and overcompensate for the lack of uh, other things going on on stage. Um, I wouldn't mind another guy in the band. Yeah, or do you that's like on the cards for like, uh, after we finish this world tour and we've got the next album recorded and that's gone and we think contemplating new tours, mm. this is going to be, you know, the end of 82, the end of 83. We'll, pro we'll probably have a, a keyboard guitarist sort of person in the band as well. It's a new mm. re revelation, isn't it? It is actually, that's one for the fans. Mm. Yes, yeah, so if anyone's listening that's that. quite yeah. adept on uh, keyboards and guitars and drums, that wants to have their heads screwed up over the next couple of years. But in fact, you've been playing with Nils Lofgren of late, haven't you? Oh yeah, and Nils must have done a dozen shows with us in America, and he would join us for a few numbers. I went on stage and did something like eight numbers. It worked great, just slotted in as well as he slotted in with the Pretenders, because he does come, a f he does become a fifth Pretender when he's with us, because he knows all the songs. He augments. He, you see, sort of, he knows the songs so well. He plays little bits in between what Jimmy already plays, so it's not like doubling up. That made me want great one player. another member in the group, somebody to play off. Mm. Ideally, we want to get an unknown though, because it's, you know, it's easier. Cheaper as well, I suppose. Mm. Oh, you spotted it! You're not supposed to do that! guys like and it's very hard for this group to be serious on stage then I mean. I, I really enjoy going to a gig and seeing a band playing whether they're any good or not but if they're having a good time on stage I mean that makes such a difference to me. It's far better just to you know 
let the music just sort of suffer a little bit just for, just for the fact that you're having a real laugh. It's getting a bit better like that. People are tending to realise it's a band and not, you know, Chrissy in a backing band. There's did that, did of, that piss you off? publications that are coming out re Didn't recently. Didn't piss off? Did I want to mention? We've got like, pictures of just one person on the front of the cover, which is really stupid. Makes everybody angry. And it shouldn't happen because we're banned. People should just take it as that. I think it pisses Chrissy off more than it pisses yeah. us off. That, from a sales point of view, is, is fine because every every great mm -hmm. band has always got a focal point. You know? We work quite a bit together, actually. The mm -hmm. next album will show that. Yeah, and the difficulty, really, the, the final thing is trying to get a good lyric because Chrissy can't really sing anything that's, uh, you know, not up to standard. I mean, uh, lyrics for her are so personal, so you know, close. It's, it, it's got to be something she can sing, and it's very difficult to come up with something. Did you hate Brass and Pocket as much as she claims to have done? Yeah. I enjoy playing it now. I enjoy playing it live. I think the record itself, the, the single is a bit, uh, pedestrian. Mm. But then again, I thought our albums are as well. Because mm. I prefer what we, um, our demos. But I think this goes for all groups, that all groups prefer their demos when you get the initial idea, because it's mm. so much more exciting. Really. Yeah, you tend to lose a bit of spontaneity when you're going to do a final thing, as opposed to like the demo when you're not too concerned about it. It's the rough edges that make it feel spontaneous. Mm.